53106 is our text number that will cost you 30 cent or you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter. See, in Galway says, I've been single for three years. I've been thinking of trying an online dating site. Most of my friends have encouraged me to do so, but a few I think it's a little odd, but the pub scene isn't working and frankly at 34, I'm a little old for that. Uh, what do your listeners think? Well, that's funny because it was a New Stork Nation survey that came out today which found that most people had no problem with it at all. I think it was the majority said they would. Uh, Mary Lavery is here from the Farmer's Journal. What do, uh, what do lonely farmers do these days? Is there a farmer's dating website? Um, well, we've got voice personals in the Farmer's Journal. Ah. We were the first to have um, a getting in touch column way back. And uh, the letters came in and we had a, a lady looked after it and she basically mixed and matched them. And, you know... Oh, yeah, she was a matchmaker, she essentially. She was excellent at it. Absolutely superb. So then it's gone all electronic nowadays, so we have voice personals. Yeah. But for people up to 35, even later in life, the Mocker and Farm is a really great kind of social movement uh, across rural Ireland. Um, Absolutely great crack. Actually, I have a son, and I get a plug in here now. All right. Uh, my son Ian, he's uh, he's representing Dublin, believe it or not, because he's here working in Dublin, and he's representing the Triple R Mocker Club, which is Rat Mines, Rat Gar, and Ranana, as Mr. Personality. So the Mr. Personality in Mocker is on this weekend down in Kilkenny. So there's going to be an absolute mighty crack. Mr. Personality. So if you're looking for a farmer, head for, and a, fellas with personality, head for Kilkenny this weekend. Right, well, there you go. That's I thought it. you were going to say my son Ian's looking for a wife there. I'm no, not kind of, quite I yet. Not, not quite yet. No, 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 no. Don't, don't want to bring in a wife. If he's got a personality, he'll have no bother anyway. Anyway, uh, rotten yeah. day outside. Oh, stop! Isn't uh, it and, off, and, and, and it was so nice uh, not too long yeah, but ago. But it's not. Look, you can hear it, me. I'm dying here with a cold. Um, after a glorious February and March, I even got the tights off and got into the sandals. You know, <laughs> and I'm paying for it since. Um, anyway, we should have known. This is Ireland. You know that story about the, uh, you know how on average you're all right. You know, <laughs> if your head is in the fire and your feet are in the freezer, <laughs> you know, on average you're doing all right. Yeah. Well, we, we're having that kind of weather at the minute because like February and March, glorious, absolute glorious. Ah. The grass, I mean, sure, I was coming in here, you know, you never, oh, you can't talk too soon. Anyway, the grass was spouting, the little lambs were sitting back, you know, basking in the sunshine. The baby calves were out, everything. They were all shivering and, you know, shaking in this weather. This is the least animals hate this weather they don't mind the cold they don't mind the wet they don't mind the wind but when they get the cold wet and wind together it just catches every weakness particularly now with small lambs well they're no different but to the rest of us no, then in that but, regard but cows actually will give less milk they're uncomfortable standing out in the wet weather mm. and they'll give less milk they're certainly not interested in the man himself um, so I mean yes. you know, they won't make they just, <laughs> you mean da- you mean uh, no, not online dating no, yeah. no they're, they're just not interested <laughs> right. so I mean they're going to well again no different to the rest of us then, really. And then, you know, animals are heavy. I mean, if you think of a big, you know, big bullock, big cows out there. And, you know, in a lot of heavy land around the country, this kind of, if we got a couple of days of this weather, the ground gets poached and it's nothing to do with eggs. What it means is it gets literally turned over. It's like as if they're ploughing it. Mm. So what farmers are having to do in a lot of cases, stock that should be coming out of sheds is being kept indoors and more stock are being put in. Now, that's all right if you have um, plenty of silage and stuff left. But an awful lot of farmers don't. The shed's empty and it's expensive have to put them back in. It also means the diet is changing and they don't like that either. So, you know, you add it all together. We hate it. I mean, the only, I don't know, ducks might like it, swans might like it. <laughs> yes. But the, any the kind of uh, farm animals dread it. And um, it, it's just not comfortable weather. And it's and it's kind of, we're heading into the 1st of May now when we should be, like there's silage made. You know, I mean, we actually have, people have made silage. Mm. And for, but for the last four or five weeks, we've had this dry, cold weather, harsh weather. And on fields, you know, you, you like most of us kind of plan the, the day's dinner to really organise people plan the week's dinner and that they go shopping once a mm. week. Farmers need to plan about 40 days grass growth ahead. Like, there's no point telling, you know, 40 hungry bullocks, sorry, the grass will Didn't take a grow. few more days yeah. to grow. You have to stay here and stay put. So when cows or cattle and everything come out of sheds in the beginning, that first rotation, as they call it, across the farm, these are the people who have paddocks and everything nicely organised. They try to get about 40 days out of it. So, you know, it's a gentle eat around. Then, because grass comes quicker, you're talking about rotations of 21 days. So you're getting around the farm in 21 mm. days. But that actually, there's an awful lot of work in to get that right. So that A, the grass doesn't go too too heavy because then it's no use to anybody either. 
and they only they only kind of ploughed into the ground. But now, you know, farmers are down to only a couple of days grass ahead of them and they're looking at the sheds or they're looking at, you know, will the weather turn, will the weather change, the first of May, will we actually get summer? Mm. So that's where we're at with it. Uh, there was also a, a story this week about the HSE uh, uh, looked yeah, into well, farmers' no, it's a, health. It's uh, a new report out from the HSE and I tell you, the stress of this kind of weather is what exactly is causing it. It's a, it's a really startling research and it's done into mortality rates of across the population um, from 2000 to 2000 and six people aged six, 15 to 64 and when, when this was done in previous years farmers came in as one of the healthiest groups that was was out there you know occupational groups you kind of put you know salaried employees versus you know farm labourers and, and yeah. farmers in, in, in that group but this new report is just we've got an exclusive on for in country living in the farmers journal this week coming out tomorrow um, farmers are five and a, just over five times more likely to die from any cause of group than any salaried employees they're almost seven times more likely to to die from circulatory, circulatory diseases which is heart disease and stuff and they're nearly four times more likely to die from cancers now why has it in in that period kind of if you take the 80s to 90s most of us our health was getting better yeah but farmers have gone backwards they're now dying younger that's odd it, it is odd and so so i mean you know what, what's the reason now the hse they have discovered it through looking at the trends and and the mortality of the different occupational groups and they're saying it needs an awful lot further research but they're absolutely saying that from 1995 to 2009 um, farming income in Ireland declined by 43% in real terms. Okay. 43%. Now that's not, this is actual absolute factual stuff. It's not making up or anything like that. Mm. 43%. And um, income and health inequality are very much kind of tied in together and people putting off going to the doctor people kind of working when they they really shouldn't be when they should be sick when they, when they should be taking rest from being sick mm -hmm. all of this sort of stuff looks as if it's playing into it but what the HSE and Dr. Bridget Smith are saying is we need more research on this uh, we need to find out why as a group have they regressed so completely uh, when it comes to, um, to, the, to their physical health and well-being uh, Marie, thanks very much uh, for coming into us uh, today and uh, obviously best of luck to Ian with the Mr. Personality uh, competition. We might be interviewing him one day. And uh, we're down, just country living, we've got Nevin Maguire, Paul and me and Peter Young down in Mount Woolsey Hotel tomorrow evening, 7.30 for the last of our Spring Series Women in Agriculture. Okay, game ball. Marie Lavery there from the Farmer's Journal. We'll be back with the news. Yeah.